first time I heard of it was on Gear Sluts, actually, I think. And um, everybody just had really positive things about, to say about the sound quality um, and the clarity and whatnot. And, um, you know, I Googled you guys and checked it out. And, I, and um, I think I noticed, I don't know him personally, but I think I read an article or something with Dylan, uh, Dylan Dresdos was using them with the, on the black cat, black IP stuff or something. He was, and I remember reading that he like took them into the studio and replaced the 192s with the links. And I was like, Oh wow. Okay. And then I checked them out and I heard them and I was kind of blown away by the sound because I compared them to a 192 and it was just really opened up when you compare them to a 192, especially, um, and uh, that, yeah, that's how I heard about them. And then the fact that they were single rack space, they were very uh, affordable compared to the competition and they had no fans in them because I was going to have them really close to me and I wanted to get three of them. So I didn't want the fan noise and the fact that they didn't have fans and they sounded so good in the price, it was just a no brainer. Um, well, all the Beyonce stuff um, gets you know, um, done with uh, Roars um, for the most part. You know, my studio, I'm always doing her stuff in my studio um, through links, always have. Um, every, everything uh, uh, everything I've done in the last 10 years, I guess, is links. Um, FK Twigs, Autolux, um, Nicki Minaj. But yeah, all, everything I do is through links for the most part. Definitely. Um, so before I moved to the to the ends, um, I I did a shootout and I A B them against pretty much all the major players. Um, I don't want to name names, but let's just say all the major players. Um, but uh, anyway, um, I A B them and they won out against everything. And we calibrated it down to a tenth of a dB at one k, and then we did it again at ten k. Um, we went uh, in and out of the, the converters and did an A to D, D to A. Um, and then we did, you know, I, I did some tests of my own where I went in and out a bunch of times. Um, and Lynx just won every time blind, you know, every single time it, 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 we did it, we did it blind. And um, there was a one, a one, a one manufacturer, we actually realized that they were adding a tenth of a dB at 10K on their D to A. I noticed that the, the the sibilance in the song was a little bit more pronounced, um, not in a bad way. Like it was just, oh, look, a little more top in, and I'm like, that's strange. And then what? And then we cal that was cal at one k, perfectly. And then we were like, hmm, and like, okay, now let's cal the ten k. We cal the ten k, and then of course their 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 mids and their lows dropped that amount so it was like personally i don't understand putting eq on a d to a but you know i guess it's one of those things that's like you know to win you know to if if you're not aware of that if you don't catch that like you'd be like oh it's a little more bright a little clearer you know like but yeah yours are flat and that's what i love I, i'm from the, the philosophy of i don't want to transform around my converter that i can't disengage um coloring the sound all the time um I don't want, I want transparency. I don't even want to know they're there. I want, you know, like I want it to be completely invisible to everything as, as possible as, as we possibly can do it. Um, and then that way I can make all the color decisions with mixing and plugins and gear and pedals and all that shit. And then like, it just, you know, it, that, that makes sense to me. And then it just becomes about usability and functionality and, 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 and um, does it always work and work well? And it does. It works really, really good. So, it's, and yeah, no fans, single rack space. <laughs> Looking for your favorite thing. In my studio, I just moved up to the Aurora Inn, um, which is an improvement. It's really close to the original, but it's, stuff, it's an improvement. And the functionality and feature sets amazing but uh, yeah i just use them for everything you know, listening to music listening to title listening to um 
you know, mixing, recording in my studio. They're perfect for hardware inserts. The delay compensation is dead on. I mean, I use them for everything. I, I record vocals with them. Anything, anything and everything I would need a converter for, I use them for. I was always into music, even as a baby. Um, you know, my, I really responded, reacted to music. Um, like I think a lot of us. Um, and when I was five, I got my first cassette deck recorder. It belonged to my grandfather, actually. And when he died, um, we were at his house and everybody was kind of like, you know, figuring out what to do with all this stuff. And and I was like a little kid and, and I was like, I want that tape recorder. Can I have that tape recorder? Mom was like, yeah, sure, you can have that. It had it worked, but it had an issue with it. It played back, but then it didn't record with the microphone that it had attached to it. It took me about two days to figure out if I unplugged the microphone because I was learning to read at that time. So I read on the front of it, it said mic. There was a mic on the unit itself, not just the mic. So the mic, the mic, the handheld mic was broke and it was dead patching the mic on the unit. And I figured out if I unplugged it. Cause I read Mike. I was like, Oh, that's another Mike. And then like I unplugged it and then hit record and it worked. I was like, yeah. And I was like, that was my first troubleshooting experience um, recording at five. <laughs> um, and then I got a, a Magnavox um, boom box in the eighties that I was like rocking Michael Jackson and uh, BC boys and uh, Stevie wonder um, cool in the gang, stuff like that. So on the family stone, like I was really into all that as a kid. And um, all the early hip hop, fat boys, stuff like that. And then I got a karaoke machine when I was in seventh grade, not to do karaoke because I was like, oh, this is cool. I can record with this. And then I used my dad's stereo in a karaoke machine. I started balancing tracks back and forth um, and playing guitar. By then, I was taking guitar lessons and learning punk riffs and basic stuff and whatever. And I was more into sound design than I was learning songs, to be honest. And I, and I, I really got into guitar pedals and like, sound design making noise and stuff but making really gnarly uh, distorted sounds and stuff and and then yeah took lessons for a while then i got into djing when i got late teens bought turntables got into scratching samplers djing all that and um didn't know anybody doing that i just bought um vhs's of the scratch pickles and the bee junkies and, and watched how they did all their scratches and like learned how to do that and learned how to dj and then I went to Full Sail, like 21, because it just was like a natural progression. And then went to New York City and uh, got an internship at Quad Studios. And uh, Rep Quad alumni represent. Um, and started there. And then Ann Mincielli trained me as an assistant. Alicia Keys is engineer. Um, and then just, yeah, just kept going from there. Like in the hip hop R&B world, I always joked. It's like when you get drum sounds, you got 15 minutes. You know what I mean? You don't have days to get a snare sound. You know, it's like jingle work. And you learn how to like figure out how to get a drum sound in a studio and where to put it, where to position the mics, you know, what heads to use, um, what works and what doesn't work. Because once sound comes through those speakers, you got 10 minutes before they're going to be like, hit record now. 